Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, excuse the uh, dramatic entrance, but this video, I needed some gear, and um, that's four boxes of gear that I'm going to use for this video about fit, style, and fashion. And listen, if you've watched this channel at all, you know they don't always go hand in hand, and they mean different things. Of course they do. But I thought I would use the newly premiered all of our brown heritage line the 007 60th anniversary celebration line that they came out with uh, there's a video right there maybe you've seen it if you haven't seen it probably go back and watch that one first before you see this one because this is going to get into some very different realms now some of you joined hey the beard is coming in must be winter time so <laughs> some of you are joined this video because you saw fit and you're like, oh, okay, he's going to get into, you know, maybe how Bond wears things and, you know, how should polos fit and things like that. I've done those before, but this is actually going to get into other different realms. If you've come here to say, well, I want to get something from Olibar Brown. I want to see how it fits him. Let me start with some stats. It's always helpful. So first of all, I am five foot nine with the wind blowing up beneath me. Hmm. Uh, I am a 41 chest, little barrel chested, 41 chest. I am a 31 inch waist. Okay. You can see here. So right now I'm wearing a, uh, all of our Brown polo. It is in a size medium. That's going to help a lot. So you may look at this and go, David, I don't like the fit on you. Some of you may go, that's the fit. That's the fit I want. That's a James Bond fit. That's a Daniel Craig type fit, et cetera. But if you use my stats, you can then say, well, I'm this size and my waist is this size, ergo and vis-a-vis, -vis, maybe I should get that size from Olibar Brown. That's how this game works, all right? But there's a lot of things in here. I'm not too sure what's in the boxes, all right? I worked with Olibar Brown to curate some things, but Let's get right underway. First of all, we're going to start with a little box because it's like, it's like, it's like Christmas and Danielle, you know, God love her. It's like, she's running a, a distribution center here with how many boxes come in. Oh, 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 all right. So right off the bat pamphlet, we've got the all of our Brown. And again, we're going to have a lot of boxes here, but we got to see what's in it. Now I know that their particular focus this time has been on, mm -hmm, yeah, I kind of knew this was, uh, Dr. No. So this is the Dr. No. These are the Bulldog James Bond Dr. No twos. They are the Dr. No twos. And it's kind of auspicious that I've opened this one up. By the way, check this out. Dr. No, uh, appropriately placed lipstick. Who doesn't like James Bond innuendo? Ladies and gentlemen, come on. How's that for your whimsy? There may be uh, something special on Instagram coming up with these pair, but just wait for it. We'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll go to the next size box. Yes, this is an unboxing video as well. Oy! All right. So this is so cool. So when you get the all of our brown stuff, you know, you, you kind of have this wonderful packaging. It always has like a little booklet and things like that but we want to get to the crux of what's in here. So I may disappear from time to time. Here I am. I'm back. Aha. Aha. Okay. So this is cool. We've got our first piece piece. Uh, this is, as you can see, the toweling polo from Dr. No. Let's get up and close. You've seen this before. I know you have, but this is the one that pretty closely emulates the one that Sean Connery's seen in in Dr. No. See, see how the 60th anniversary, but there's something different here. There's something very cool. Come on. I got to show you this. Look at that. Look at the tag now. So for those of you that want those little hidden moments, they want something a little subtle. You know, there is the hang tag down here below. It's not a hang tag, David. It's a little tag on the opposite side. You'll have your 007. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But on the inside, your little secret, and whoever's laundering your clothes, maybe it's you, maybe you take them in. Uh, they have the 60th anniversary, which is very nice. 
This is the Ryder Dr. No Riviera. This size is medium. So why don't we jump into our first one and we'll talk about fit and size, but also style and fashion. Okay, here it is. Here it is. You could see kind of where it falls. Um, this would be in total transparency, a little bit long on me. Sometimes I get Steve the tailor to hem the shirt, believe it or not. That is because this is meant to fit tall guys too. So if you're six foot two, this will hit at the right size as much as somebody else. I could wear it this long, but I usually have Steve the tailor tailor it down just a little bit. But you could see this is a size medium. You could see the way it's fitting in the shoulder. Now I haven't wash this or iron this. You got this big clunky mic looking at this. So it is breaking up the lines a little bit, but you'll get the sense of how this fits. First of all, you've got these banded pieces right here. We've talked about that in the Dr. No look. You also have a banded collar, so they match kind of nicely. I love this. This is why I like all of our brown. And by the way, Tosca is not for everyone. I get it that all of our brown is not for everybody. It does fit most sizes, but if you're built a certain way, it, it, I think it enhances your body and, and your look even more. For me, it's, this is it. Like I get up early in the morning to work out. Um, so all bar brown to me, it, it takes that discipline and that moment of working out and it, it raises all ships, if you know what I mean. So I think it flatters. So you could see the size medium fits well in the body. I'll try to, why am I, why am I doing this? It's like Bigfoot walking across the screen. It makes no sense. Why do I do that? Um, it doesn't help your posture or your body, David. I like to talk to myself in these videos. I don't know if you knew there was nobody behind the camera. It's an iPhone. So here we go. <laughs> Let me stand up straight like a, like a human being. And you could see that the medium fits great in the body, fits great here in the shoulders. And again, this just came out of the box. So it's got a little bit of what I call box pucker. You'll have to forgive me. I think it fits me nice in the biceps and it fits me good in the chest. If I had gone small in this, I think it might be just a wee bit tight. I don't know, but there may be a small that I've requested coming up. So we're going to see. Now, from a fit standpoint, we've covered that. We've covered the bases. Let's talk about fashion and style because these are aspects that I think we grapple with. We say to ourselves, for example, some people have noticed this toweling polo almost looks like it's wet. And you could see it on camera. I'm not touching myself, I swear. <laughs> yeah, officer. Um, but I'm trying to show you that depending on which way the fabric goes, it's toweling, so you're going to look like it's wet, etc. That bothers some people. That is, the, that is the fashion, the style, if you will, of toweling. Now, toweling sounds like it would be cool, um, breathe through. If you want something on a hot day that cools you down. The linen in all of our brown or what I was just wearing, this wicking away fabric is better. Think about if you wrapped a, a, a heavy towel around yourself on a hot day, would you cool down? Probably not. But what you find in this is it takes away the moisture. So it is like wrapping yourself. So if you do have any kind of perspiration, for example, the toweling polo is perfect. I've worn this in the Bahamas when it was incredibly hot. I've worn it in Jamaica when it was like lava coming down from the skies. And it keeps me cool it, because again, it wicks away the perspiration. But this type of like toweling is not for everybody. I will say this though, for those of you that are straddling style and fashion, let me talk to you about what I think the differences are. Style never goes out of style. <laughs> style is a, uh, think about it as something that is timeless. Style is timeless. Style is a particular cut, a, a collar size, you know, the, the, the darkness of a midnight navy, for example, things like that. Where fashion is a little bit more cutting edge. It's a little bit more, I think, today. Now you could say, well, David, the fashion of the times, 1930s had the fashion of the time. Yes, but think about that. In the times or the eyeballs of the 1930s, that would have been in fashion which means things go out of fashion. If you have classic style, it never goes out of style. Style can also be a part of your personality. So David's, why am I putting that in quotes? It's a real David here. David's style of clothing is shawl collar cardigans and navy polos. And yes, I've adopted that from Bond and Steve McQueen, but it's my style. So it can be an adoption of your own opinions and perception and choices. 
This could be a style for somebody, but to other people, it could be fashion. Let's see what else we got in here. Hold on. Oh, 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 oh. We got wrapping. Oh, <laughs> I know what this is. So sticking with the, uh, the Dr. No theme, this is their um, Dr. No, inspired by James Bond and Dr. No 1962. This is their Dr. No knitted polo in ivory. Now check this out. Now this, if I get up close, I don't know if you can see, hold on a second, I'm gonna show you. This is rather sheer. I've worn this out in the wild. I wore it actually in Jamaica, the first time I went to Jamaica. You could see with my hand how sheer this is. So this is better if you've got a tan. Um, this is better if you don't have a lot of chest hairs poking out, things like that. So to me, this is a ivory polo, which is kind of classic style. It's got the banded bottom. It's got the banded here, but, um, and it's a size medium. So this would fit me great but it also has kind of a fashion flair to it because the knitted aspect of it makes it a little sheer. Now, this knitted sense to these polos right here, this is very Olibar Brown because they take and borrow from the 1950s, 1960s, etc. And this would have been absolutely something you would have seen then. We got to try it on. Okay, so this is the size medium. It's it's pretty huggy on me. Um, for many of you, maybe the majority of you, this would be deemed as too tight. I mean, when you can start to see the, the uh, I hope you, don't listen, don't call me a hero, don't call me brave for wearing this. You could see the pectoral muscles through the shirt. And in some cases you can kind of see through the shirt. I mean, this is something I would, I personally would have no problem wearing this in certain areas, you know, Miami. Perfect. Uh, Jamaica, Bahamas, Portugal, those type of places, European countries, etc. But this is it. This is why, you know, we've got to talk about the style and fashion, even as it pertains to fit. In the United States, this fit might seem as a little bit, you know, you know, sprayed on um, and a little bit too maybe avant-garde. In Europe, especially like in Italy and places like that, this would this would be the look. Uh, you could disagree with me below. I'm sure this will be a very divisive video. We love those because we get people's opinion. But you can see from me, for example, this is a size medium. I could have gone up one. And this is good for you to understand. In this particular thing, because the knitting is so sheer, um, it's so snug, it's so fitted. Uh, very, very tailored kind of look. I may want to go up one to give myself a little bit of room, a little bit of relief. Again, I've got a comfort level here, but it could be elevated. Speaking of elevated, hold on. We got something else in here. I'm just pulling these out like rabbits. Oh, okay. This is cool. Um, and I've worn this before. I love it. So I'm not going to try it on, but I will show it to you. This is the Rider. This is the rider in uh, Plum. I believe it's called Plum. I want to get this right. Yes. So this is Plumber. So this is the toweling polo. It's a size medium. And you can see it right there. This is Plum. Now, why do, why do I wear this so much? You've seen this in a lot of videos. I'll tell you why. He never wears this color in the film. This, to me, is Olibar Brown's magic their superpower, if you will, of taking James Bond pieces and giving them an homage to it. So what I like to do is I'll wear this as an homage, a deference nod, not to Dr. No, but to Goldfinger. To me, it looks almost like the Slazenger color. I mean, look at that. It looks kind of like the Slazenger color. So if I'm going to a backyard barbecue, maybe I'll get the Lock & Co hat and a pair of Olibar Brown charcoal shorts, you know, bathing suit, and then pair it with this, and then I've got a secret Goldfinger moment. Don't tell anybody. Uh, look, Old Bar Brown didn't put it like that. They didn't put their models in with that, but this is about you having a little bit of fun with these moments. We got something else, though. We're still only in the second box. I hope, I hope you've poured yourself a libation at this point. It's going to be a little bit. All right, so again, we've got the wonderful bag. By the way, this bag, the way people use this, 
not just a transport, you can. Um, some people use it as a shoe bag, an individual shoe bag. Some people use it as an accessory or wires. They put it into their uh, travel kits. But wet bathing suits. I mean, it's, it's waterproof. So you got that. Aha, aha, aha. I knew it. So now you've got the poster shorts. Now these are a reissue of these shorts. Here we go. Let me flip the tag back. Look at that, like a yo-yo. Let me flip the tag back so you can see that. Now, a lot of people were like, what's with Bond wearing, what's with Bond wearing the, the color? It's almost like a coral or, or red. What is that? That is because, and I said it before and I've, I'll say it again, the lobby cards, here, we'll show you one right now. The lobby cards back in the 1960s had to show really colorful pictures, okay? So one of the things with these colorful pictures is Sometimes you couldn't have blue on blue because look at that. It would be blue sky and blue pants and blue, 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 blue. So in this case, they had a pop of red to really draw your eye line to it. So there's the poster. This is obviously on the bulldog. That's what they put the posters on and it looks great. Let's go to the next box. By the way, lest you don't think this is like real unboxing. Yeah, you know that noise. Hold on. Wait for it. This is a gigantic box from them. Let us see what is in here. Again, I am not, I'm not opening this in any, oh. that's a fine how do you do. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what this is. Let's, let's take a look. All right, this is, of course, the Dr. No. This is the robe. You can see that it's in toweling. Take a look at that new tag with the Dr. No 60th anniversary tag in there. So this is not exactly like the previous one that many of you own. By the way, this is a size small. They do come in different sizes. I like my robe to be, look like it's on my body as opposed to like this, you know, giant Muppet going down Sesame Street. Like, oh, who's that? Snuffleupagus? Is that Snuffleupagus? No, I, I like my robes to fit my body. So I don't like them to like hang on me like, a, like an Afghan. So this is the color mid blue. It's called Dent Dr. No. The names on these are very creative. They're about the characters. So you've got Honey Rider, you've got Professor Dent. So let's, um, let's put this on. Okay, here we go, here we go. And let me step back for a moment. Hello, robe. So check this out. I'll come over here so you can see this a little bit better. Hi, everyone. So you could see that the small, it fits me perfectly. I mean, if I come back over here, it's not too big in the body. It's not too small. It's perfect. I've got the hand pockets right here. The shawl's fitting nice. And again, this is a small, okay? Now, we got to talk about style and fashion. To me, there's nothing more stylish than a robe. I don't think a lot of men wear robes anymore. I think it's almost like, dare I say, a lost art. It really is because, listen, men, including this guy, they'll put on a pair of briefs. I won't wear briefs really, but I, I walk around in sweats and sweatpants and things like that. It's not as elegant. You know, putting on a robe, there's something about putting on a robe with a nice pocket for your cigar, or your pipe. I may be exaggerating that, but just to walk around, put your hands in your pocket, you know, talk about life, get a nice cognac, walk around. Talk about things you don't know. Pretend you, you do know. That's what a robe does to you. And then you have the added fun. Wait for it. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to show this to you. Wait for it. You have the added fun of this. It's like you took the robe from Dr. No's place. So it's the property of Dr. Julius No Crab Key. It's got that fun of taking the hotel robe and kind of walking away with it. That's fun. I see something else in here that we just talked about. Let's grab it out of the box. Oh, look, at, you know, it's so funny when you get like a little clue, like to pop a red. Let's try this puppy on. Okay, the very reason I'm not putting on my mic yet is I don't want to break up the lines of this. This is the red polo that you just saw in the Dr. No sort of lobby card type look. This is the toweling polo, the rider one, but it's in red. This is one of the 
new releases for the 60th anniversary. Now I'll put this puppy on. I didn't want to break up the lines right away. Here we go. This way you can hear me as I walk and talk around. Size medium again, fit. We got to talk about it. It's perfect. This one hits me really nice. I don't know. I could, I'm almost psychologically thinking it's a little bit higher up on me, but I'm sure it's the same exact length. They're pretty good about this. You could see where the biceps fit, chest fits great. All right. So fit wise, this is the toweling polo. So there's not going to be that much variation. I got to talk about style and fashion though, because this is a red polo. Now I paired all of these outfits. You can see with a very simple pair of Uniqlo chinos. These are basic beige, et cetera. They're fine. All of our brown makes beige. Everybody makes beige or stone colored. That is so I could have this red pop. I was, <laughs> this is how things happen in these videos. I was all ready to have a conversation with you about this moving to the side of fashion because, you know, red is in right now. I know, I know. What are you reading? What magazines are you reading, David? But it's true, if you look at Esquire or GQ or anything like that, red is in, uh, both for men and women, it's almost like universal, gender neutral, as far as the color's concerned. My wife, she bought a red Tesla, she's got a big pair of red sunglasses that she loves, red is what I'm trying to say. So I'm thinking to myself, this was going to be my discussion about fashion because people are gravitating to red. Red used to be, stop! I mean, literally, stop! Don't go forward. So it would stop people in their tracks. It's so abrupt. But now it's becoming a little bit more avant-garde, a little bit more European, a little bit more forward motion. So red, I think, can blend in nicely. And I have to say, as I look out amongst my backyard and I see some orange leaves and a couple green, but yellow, and there's the red maple leaves that are turning a bright red. We've got a Japanese maple in the front. There's red all around us. So from a, from a fall standpoint, especially now as we go into these things, I think this is becoming a little bit more, dare I say, a style universal color. You could disagree with me. Now, if you do disagree with me, chances are this next piece right here may be the piece for you. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, this may be the most purchased item from the 60th anniversary of Olabar Brown. It's the one that I keep hearing from people like, oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that. By the way, not everybody has a throaty smoker's voice like I just, well, what, what impression was that? I have no idea. Before I get into this piece, I want to show you the hang tags. Now, these hang tags, they become collectibles to themselves, as strange as that sounds. But check this out. Look at that. It is the gun barrel scene from Dr. No. It's got the little Dr. No moment in there. That is really cool. I love the hang tags on here. And of course, that is their way to have these little bit celebratory moments for the 60th anniversary of James Bond. So this is the Ryder Dr. No. Let me hold it up. But the color, the color is a midnight navy. Now, I love me these toweling polos. I've got a lot of colors. Hell, I even have like a safety orange color. I think you're, you're walking away with the idea that I, I really like these toweling polos. I like the, the, this, that kind of striated banded color. I like the banded sleeves. I just like them a lot. This was like a fantasy wish to me. You know, when, when Simon, the uh, creative director, showed me this one, this was the Sophie's Choice one. You know, if, you know, David, you're allowed to pick one, run out of the building quick. This would be my run out of the building quick one right here. So without further ado, let's try it on so we could talk about it. All right, here we go. Here we go. We've got the Midnight Navy. Look at the richness of this color. Now, this is interesting. This is the toweling, like I told you, but you don't see that kind of wetness. You see a little bit of it, but it, it's got this very classic style color to it. This is, this is my jam. This is the jelly in my jam roll right here. It's got that same classic look style. It's very, I, I don't think that navy blue, midnight navy especially ever goes out. It's almost black in certain lights. Um, but this to me is the color. This to me says James Bond. I mean, think about it. There are, there are other Bond brands that will use this midnight navy, like, like his shawl tuxedo was in Dr. No, to use as a template for who Bond is. Bond is midnight navy 
blue. It just, he is. I mean, that's, if Bond could be a color, it would be this color. And Apollo is just so classic, so military. Now we've done something a little bit different. Yes, we did. We like to change it up on you. We like to confuse the hell out of you. This is a size small. So you saw the mediums on me, which I thought had a great fit, classic style fit. This is a small, all right? So I will say the small fits me perfectly around where it hits. Um, however, I don't know if you can see this. There's that pectoral kind of cut right there. That's not a bad thing for somebody who's my age, but if it's showing up in a shirt, it may be just a tad on the small size. So that being said, if I was to walk into an Olibar Brown store right now, I probably would walk out with a size medium in this. I would go with like what you saw in the red and the light blue. I would do a size medium because I think it fits well everywhere like this. It's a little bit, now I'm happy with this. Um, listen, these things, they become you, again, with the rabbit ears, overuse, overuse of the rabbit ears, David. But they tend to break in with you. So I would hope that this would break in over time. But why even think about breaking in when you buy a luxury Bond brand item? Just get the right size. So David, you're a size medium when it comes to these polos. Don't be in denial. You're in a size medium. However, some of these things fit differently. Some of the linen shirts fit differently than the toweling shirts. So that's why we talk about size. But ladies and gentlemen, we have another box. And it's a doozy, so let's open it. All right, so if, if you've gotten this far in the video, chances are you're not messing about. I told you this color is the classic color to me. So imagine, if you will, if they had done a Dr. No robe in that classic color. Um, and here it is. <laughs> here it is. So this is the, uh, what is it? All of our brown dent Dr. No in a midnight navy. This is the robe. We're going to try this puppy on. Yeah, we are. Oh boy. I'm excited. So I, I have to admit, confession time. Ah, yeah, this is the one. This is the go-to. This is the color. I mean, look at, look at the way this looks. This is the richness of a midnight navy. It's got that plushness. And it's still, hold on a second, it still has that Dr. No fun in there where you basically told, stole it from Dr. Julius. But we're not fooling around any longer. Not that we were fooling around before, but let's go back to the whole idea of style and fashion or fashion and style, whatever you have. I'm about to try on some things that have probably been I won't even say controversial, the most talked about aspects of all of Barr Brown's releases from way back when, when they did the Dr. No, sorry, Goldfinger, listen to me, I'm, I got Dr. No on the head and on the body. The Goldfinger onesie, the light blue onesie, they released it and uh, here it is right here. Oh, didn't see that coming. And it sold out, first run sold out. Second run, sold out. Third run, blah, blah, blah. They just couldn't keep it in. And now for the 60th anniversary, they said, you know what, let's, let's get a little creative and let's do it in different colorways. So let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so the first onesie that I put on is, it's an homage, okay? The color is the same color. It's like an ivory as you would have seen Ursula Andres when she comes out of the water. So get that kind of image in mind and things like that. So that's, that's the color they decided to go with because again, these are very popular. Now in the bond community, let me start off by saying, this is a divisive discussion. I mean, they, you know, they, they call it a onesie or romper, old man, childlike. I mean, you've got everything. People saying I would never wear that in a million years. Even Connery couldn't pull it off. Only Connery, Connery could pull it off. There's as many opinions about this onesie as there are individuals and they are all individual let me show you this particular one this is the ivory one okay don't look at my winter legs you can look at my winter legs but here it is and this this is a size small 
Okay, so interestingly enough, when I did the, uh, the campaign that you see right here, I wore a size medium. It was kind of big on me. It was kind of billowy and stuff like that. I, I like the size small because, listen, if I'm going to commit to this, <laughs> if I'm going to commit to this, I'm going to commit to this, and I'm going to wear this like I'm wearing something at a pool. And you're asking yourself right now, okay, David, this is your opportunity. Say it. Would you wear this? Would you wear this out in public? You're wearing it in your basement. It's a safe zone. There's nobody there but you and your iPhone. Would you wear this in public? And the answer is yes, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've told people this before. I've lost my embarrassment gene, clearly. I mean, the fact that I can get up in front of an inanimate object like an iPhone and do this means I'm not exactly a wallflower. And nobody out there is paying my rent. So what do I care? They're going to say something. They're going to laugh or point or whatever. I don't know. I, I've, I've got a, a, a big enough level of confidence in myself that I just don't care. Now, here's my asterisk to that bold statement I just gave you. I would wear something like this in Miami. I'd go to the Fountain Blue and wear it. I'd wear it in Jamaica, Bahamas, etc. cetera. Um, I'd, I'd wear it with a bathing suit underneath, you know, maybe take it off when I went into, of course I would take it off when I went into the pool, but I would wear it like just sitting around talking. Palm Springs would be a good place, maybe Los Angeles. I don't think I would wear this in New Orleans or Atlanta or Texas. I mean, there are places I, w I wouldn't wear this. So there is a geographical sense to, to style and fashion. I mean, this would be seen as like either the guy's trying too hard or it's too fashionable as opposed to that's an interesting style, but, but again, I don't care if people are giving me compliments on it or if they're giving me insults on it. This is for me. And if I'm really being frank, this is the one that I would actually wear. Boom, 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 boom. First of all, let me show you the color up close and personal. This is the same thing I just showed you in a midnight navy. First of all, look at that gold, gold buckle. That thing just stands out. By the way, gold zipper really stands out on this midnight navy. But this is the onesie. Still the onesie. Still the onesie. But now you've put this classic style color against it, this, this midnight navy that we were just heralding and talking about, but now it's in this particular form. Now, to many people, this has not gotten any better. People are still saying, David, it's a romper, uh, etc. But I'm here to tell you, this is the whole dovetail into kind of rethinking some of these things and also understanding when people see this in a catalog, you are probably not the audience that's going to purchase this. And, and it's, it's tough. This is, this is like a, a philosophical thing too. But the majority of people that buy the James Bond pieces from Olivar Brown are not from the Bond community. <gasps> I know. <gasps> Shocking moment. Table of one. Yeah, you're not. It's, it's people that, you know, live on the French Riviera or they live in the Hamptons or they do these things where style, fashion, they all intermingle. So I'm separating the two because I know the Bond community. I'm a part of it. You know, I understand that people like classic style. They love, you know, when Daniel Craig wears something very classic. You know, that's why Quantum of Solace is such an amazingly popular film from a sartorial standpoint. Whereas the Connery onesie is like, it's a bridge too far because it's more on fashion or, or a style of the time, which is really fashion. So there are some pieces in this collection, like any collection out there as part of Bond Brands, that are going to connect with you. And folks, I'm here to say at, towards the end of this video, that's the magic of fashion, style, and clothing of James Bond. Chances are, if you wait long enough, there's going to be something that's going to connect with your personality. Why on earth would you out there purchase this if you would never connect this to who you are. Now, I don't know if you notice, I'm a 
relatively gregarious guy. I like to have humor and fun. That's what my video is about. I don't sit here and go, in 2023, this was what happened, and then yum, 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 yum. No. No. I like to have fun. I like to laugh. I like to not take myself too seriously. I poke and jib and jab at myself. So if you're having fun and you can kind of melt your mind a little bit, this might be for you, but it's not going to be for most people. That's why they don't make, you know, 500,000 of these. They just don't. And yet they still sell out. So somebody out there is connecting to these. You may connect more to that Navy polo I just showed you before. That's what I mean. That's why some people will literally build connective tissue. They will intertwine style and fashion together and they become synonymous. But ultimately, Style and fashion doesn't happen with toweling. It doesn't happen with a maid in a geography type place. It doesn't even happen within a brand. It happens in here. It happens in your head. So it is entirely opinion. It's entirely subjective. And boy, does that make it fun. And that's why down below, I'm sure I'm going to be getting comments of all types of nature, and that's okay. I can absolutely live with that. I can live with you. Still going to love you all. You're all great. And we did it all with a Bond brand that I really connect with, Olibar Brown. So thank you to Olibar Brown and the folks there to helping to create this fun video where we're doing this. Hopefully you learned a little bit about, you know, if there's products out there that you want, what fits and what doesn't, how do you get your kind of connection, but always make it your own. That is the takeaway. All right. In the meantime, this has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.